Hey everybody and welcome back. I hope you are all having a wonderful weekend. Today we're doing another Small Town America vlog and we are back in Marksville, Louisiana. Now if you saw my Fort DeRussey Civil War site vlog, uh, either my last one or two vlogs ago, depending on when this one posts, uh, you kind of know the town a little bit already and I showed you a part of it already. So that's where we're heading back to. When I was doing that vlog just a couple of weeks ago, I kind of fell in love with the place because I noticed in the little, you know, it's not really a downtown area because it's a small town, but just like the main street area where the courthouse is and all that, I noticed that there was a bunch of houses and buildings that are on the national register and just a lot of plaques, a lot of things to read and look into. So of course, I'm not going to dive too deep into all the, uh, the story of everything, but um, I figured I wanted to come back and spend a day just exploring Marksville, Louisiana. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the camera around and get right to it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, it's going to be pretty quaint. Just It's a beautiful weather. It's 75 degrees and partly cloudy, so uh, it was freezing last time I was here. That was just two weeks ago. Good old Louisiana weather. But uh, anyway, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, notification bell, all that stuff. Share it comment if you like comment if you don't like and uh let's go ahead and jump right into it see what we can get into all right folks so now we're in downtown marksville which is basically main street marksville it's not a very big town at all so it's kind of what you see is what you get right in the immediate area but uh, it's a beautiful courthouse and uh, there's quite a few things to show you here at the courthouse in the front lawn some plaques and national register things um and all that but here's basically and i'm going to show you guys a lot of other buildings right behind me and right here down the street so there's quite a few interesting looking buildings just here on main street that i want to show you but look how nice this building is it's got to be early 20th century it's got to be absolutely beautiful though I, i've kind of started falling in love with this town you know just being here a couple weeks ago and i've been i drive through marksville quite a bit for work and all that but uh, not really here. I always drive kind of around the the, uh, the broader part of town, but not really here on Main Street. But let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna show you some cool things here on the front lawn, plaques and such, and tell you a little bit about the history of the place and, uh, and all that. So, and I said, here's a, a quick glimpse of some of the other buildings I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna go take a look at it and check out, and there's some more things down the street, but uh, let's go ahead and see what we're gonna start with here. So I figured I'd start with this one. It's the history of the town and how it got its name. So it says Marcos Lice, a native of Venice, Italy, and a traveling peddler, migrated to the Avoyles Post uh, circa 1794. And a lot of towns and cities at this part of the state, in this area of the state, are very old like that. Uh, this area and also the New Orleans area. Um, I'm getting off track here. But anyway, so because of a broken wagon wheel, the pleasant environment and friendliness to the Indians or Native Americans and local residents, he decided to stay in this area. He established a trading post and eventually became known as Mark Eliche. Uh, he married Julie Carmouche, a daughter of Joseph Carmouche and Madeline Ducote of Point Capi Parish on May 3rd, 1796. Eliche obtained Spanish land grants totaling more than 400 arpents which I've equivocated to um, kind of acres. I think they're close to that. Uh, the area became known as Mark's Place. Sounds like a bar. Mark's Store and finally Marksville. And was first officially noted on US survey maps in 1809. Elise donated most of the present courthouse square. So that's pretty interesting. All right, guys, so like I was just saying a while ago, this is the gentleman, Mr. Charles Riddle. He, he's a local here, and he drove up and was talking to us about the tree behind well, where he's standing right now. And uh, he asked if I wanted to get a, a full a full explanation of all of it, and uh, he wasn't afraid to get on camera, so we, we, we <laughs> joked and said it was totally fine. So he's going to tell you a little bit about um, this plaque behind you, Mr. Solomon Northrup and the 12 Years a Slave. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of the movie by now. So, um, Mr. Charles, why don't you go ahead and kind of tell us a little bit about it all. Sure. The book was actually written by Solomon Northup and Ghost Riders, but also after he was set free after being a slave, enslaved wrongfully for 12 years. And at the end of the book, or the end of his story, after being captured or kidnapped in Washington, D.C. and being sold into slavery in Louisiana, he ended up at the Epps House, which was located south of Bunky. Well, actually it's north of Bunky, but it's now located, they moved it to LSUA as a historic museum. The Solomon Northup story has been a fantastic story. They made a movie out of it, I guess about six years ago. Dr. Sue Eakin took his book and actually edited it, given 
all the facts about the places he's been, the people he knew, to verify the facts of the book. Well, the story has really grown. Last August, that would be August, no, August 2022, I got a phone call from Reverend Jim Theus, who's a retired Episcopal priest who lives in Rapids Parish now. He was visiting North Carolina where he has some land and uh, he was also visiting with world-renowned sculptor named Wesley Wolford. You can look that up, W-O-F-F-O-R-D. He's fantastic, he's won awards and everything. And he asked the question, why don't we have a statue of Solomon Northup? Because of what he persevered through, what he endured, and that the justice system in of oil is actually freedom. Well, I said, that's a good start. You're on the committee, I'm on the committee, and we'll get some other people. So we got a varied, uh, mixed group of people who are interested in the history and interested in the story. Wow. We've been working on it for a year and a half. We've raised about $220,000 uh, worldwide. Wow. And uh, we need to raise about $90,000 more. But our date to reveal it is going to be October 19th this year, 2024. And the statue is going to be placed approximately here. As you said, that oak tree is going to be removed, not cut down. Yeah, not cut down, we like I a, said. We have a person who's <laughs> volunteered to pay for it being removed, which is a very expensive process, but they want to save the tree. And then it's going to be on a circular base so that when you walk around, you'll see the, the back, which will show the markings of a slave being whipped and everything. Oh, yeah. And as you come around, you'll see him dressed better and in a suit with, uh, not a, a suit, but of the times of his freedom. That's amazing. With the story of Solomon Northup and the sheriff, the local lawyer, and the judge all worked together to make sure he was set free without them trying to hide him. Wow. John P. Waddell, the sheriff, and Judge Cushman, whose office is actually located over, <laughs> was located over there. It says, if you look at Northup Trail, that's what I'm talking about. This is the last sign of the Northup Trail. Judge Cushman's office was there. Uh, John P. Waddell's office was down this street on the corner of Main Street and Waddell Street, needless to say. It's the old Cottonport Bank, and that's where his office was. So it was amazing that Henry Northup, who was uh, knowledgeable of Solomon's story, after Samuel Bass wrote a letter on behalf of Solomon Northup, he came down on January 1st, 1953. And then John P. Waddell was in his office working. Now, think about that on New Year's Day. Not only on a Saturday, but also <laughs> on New Year's Day. Yeah. He was working. They figured out that Samuel Bass is the one who wrote the letter. They found Samuel Bass at the landing on uh, Red River. And he came, swore an affidavit. They filed two days later, went early in the morning, and brought him back to Marksville. And there wasn't much of a court fight at all. Wow. And he was released, never came back. There were stories that Samuel Bass left, but that's not actual. Samuel Bass actually died in August of that same year. John P. Waddell, the lawyer, was with him the night before writing his will. So the story is a great story about the justice system. And the reason there's a statute is because what Solomon Northup did, to, what, he, what he went through was 12 years of living as a slave when he was a free man. And the justice system here helped him get free. Wow. Wow. And so as for the movie, is, is it pretty accurate to... The movie is fairly accurate. Yeah. At the end, they don't refer to the man who came to save him as Henry Northup, who was actually the one who came. Uh, they, they mention Mr. Parker, another friend of the family. And the reason they did that, it bothered me greatly, yeah. was because there wasn't enough backstory on how there would be a black Northup and a... I'm, and, a, and a white Northup, because Henry Northup was white. They wouldn't be able to explain that in the time allowed. But other than that, the, you know, the movie, it's dramatic, of course. Well, you know how that goes with the, some of those movies, and they, they Hollywood it out, and it, it goes too off course this, and all this that. This one was so. fairly accurate. As, as a historian, you know, I wanted it to be totally accurate, but it, was, it would have been hard to explain the Henry Northup and Solomon Northup background. So all that took place right here? In a Boyle's Parish, wow. mostly in Bunky and uh, Freed in Marksville. Actually, the courthouse was right around here. What do you, when was the courthouse built? I didn't see a plaque this, on the, on the date on that yet. This was built in 1927. Okay, so I was right. I, I figured it was a turn of the, the 20th century. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. It's actually a beautiful courthouse. Absolutely beautiful. But it was built for 1927, okay? The jail actually used to be on top. Yeah. And uh, we, we still have the hangman's, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
Jeez. We had the keys that take you up there to look at it. Yeah, I don't know. That, I don't know my viewers are ready for that yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, everything's know. welded, but we oh, can put yeah. you on top of it. Uh, and then there's the coroner's room below it to make sure that they're dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is kind of gruesome. That time is a the, whole different the time jail, back then. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, they say that four people were hung and at least two of them were guilty. <laughs> that sounds about right, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I just, that's a joke. <laughs> we're about to, I was, I was just about to... Um, Look, talk about this plaque next. Yeah. So everything you just told us kind of preempted sure, everything we need to know. So. Of it, and on the other side, there's also more story about that and, yeah. and about Samuel Bass helping him. Uh, well, well, thank you, Mr. Charles, for telling sure. us all that. Uh, if you guys want to come October 19th, yeah. you can see the unveiling of the statue. Courthouse Square, Main Street. I'm sure the local, I'm sure there are some followers we'll on my channel that would probably like to see here. that. So. All right. Uh, yeah, well, thank, thank you. Have you. a great day. Thank you. All right. So that was totally unexpected, but pretty awesome if you ask me uh mr charles just kind of walked up and or he drove up and started talking about all this stuff and he asked me if he wanted me to uh film him talking about it and i definitely enthusiastically welcomed that because i don't get many people that offer to do that for me with that much information and details so that was pretty sweet um so to follow up what he was talking about uh, we, i was just about to look at this plaque and read about it but you guys have heard about the movie uh 12 years a slave i think with brad pitt and it took uh, all that really took place like he said right here in this parish at this courthouse and you know where we're standing in front of and all that so um so everything that mr charles said you know it, it paraphrases what's on this plaque here i'm not going to go into all those details and stuff but uh yeah crazy story though you know a freed man a freed man of color was indoctrinated or taken into slavery for 12 years so uh this cool part of the the front i guess walkway of the courthouse so there's 10 different plaques of the towns the different cities that are in avoyles parish and uh of course we don't have to go to every single one of them but here's marksville Settled in 1809, incorporated 1843, and the slogan is where everybody is somebody. Tunica Biloxi Reservation, date settled 1790. Wow. Moraville. There's a few more here. Avoyles, Bienville, Bienvenue, O Avoyles, which is basically like the road of Avoyles. Settled at 1725. And so uh, let's go see what these plaques are saying over here. So this is the first Bowie knife. Now you guys, if you watch my Opelousas, um, or my, no, my, um, what did you call it? What did, uh, Orphan Train Museum vlog from about a year and a half ago. And one of my first ones I ever did, uh, it talks about Mr. Bowie, who was from the Opelousas area. And uh, so this plaque here says Resin P. Bowie brother of the Alamo hero James Bowie, so the one who created the knife and invented the knife in Opelousas is James Bowie, wrote uh, the first Bowie knife was made by him, or by, made by myself in the parish of Avoyles. So the first knife was made here. Uh, I guess you can, you'd say manufactured or actually forged here. Uh, with this knife, James killed Norris Wright in the famous sandbar fight near Natchez, Mississippi, September 19th, 1827. So the first Bowie knife was created here, or maybe not designed here, but it was made here, I guess physically made here. And uh, I will be doing a vlog sooner or later about Mr. Bowie himself, James Bowie. I haven't done one just on him yet. And like you said, he's from the area, the town he's from is right outside of Lafayette where I live. So I don't know how much of a glare you have here, but this is kind of talking about Fort DeRussey, which is my last vlog I did or maybe two vlogs ago, depending on, like I said, whenever I post this one. But uh, so Fort DeRussey, four miles north, potent Confederate stronghold defending Lower Red River Valley, yielded to land attack of General A.J. Smith's Union, uh, a Union Army on March 14th, 1864. And I talked about that in that vlog, if you're interested in seeing that, but uh, that took place here, right down the street. And the remains, if you haven't seen that vlog yet, the remains, or not the remains, but the, the mounds that the fort was built on and where it stood are still there. But it was destroyed by the Union Army that came through and burned it all down and blew it up and all that. So, and the cemetery is still there too. So that about does it for the courthouse, guys. Let's go ahead. I'm going to show you some uh, surrounding buildings here that are really old and really nice and uh, see what we can get into with that. So, 
Hope you enjoyed that uh, story by Mr. Charles and the courthouse here. Beautiful structure. So just walking around the perimeter of the courthouse, the courthouse is right here behind me. Um, so if you're looking at the courthouse, I'm to the left. Uh, this is the Bailey's, or the Bailey used to be the Bailey Hotel, um, sorry, the Bailey Theater. It used to be a theater, as you can kind of tell by looking at the old ticket window there in the front. We're gonna walk up there and read that plaque, but uh, there's a bunch of these pretty little buildings right around this area. So let's go see what the plaque says. So as we walk, closer to the Bailey Theater here. There's a plaque in the window, this old ticket window. It says circa 1916, so it's even older than the courthouse behind me. A movie theater built in the arts and crafts style by the Mayer family, first known as the Palace Theater, home to silent movies and later speaking films until about 1975. And speaking films came out around 1927, so actually the year the courthouse was built. So probably around the time the courthouse was built, they started showing the uh, what they called talkies back then. Uh, high school commencements were held here prior to 1927. Wow, so they had like probably graduations and stuff in here, like, you know, 100 years ago. But uh, let's see if we, I don't know if we can see in the windows or not. Usually my camera's pretty decent at seeing, but it's, of course it's, it's like a, you know, it's not a theater anymore. It's probably a more modern restaurant or bar or something like that now. So there's not much to really see in there. That would be anything nostalgic. Sometimes you can pick up things here and there, but not can't see much in there. But here's the broad side, or the left side of the courthouse here. And my buddy here, we we're just talking, we we're just saying how he made a good point, how, you know, back 100, if you could snap your fingers and go back 100, 150 years and just be a resident here, you know, everything downtown was here for you. They had the courthouse, the pharmacy, they had, you know, a theater behind me here. Um, doctor's office, you know, stuff like that, and then everybody lived like right outside. You see the houses back there. Everybody lived right outside of downtown. It was walking distance or horse and car uh, carriage distance. And uh, I just love how they keep, when new people keep the buildings here and restore them and take care of them. Check out this sign, I just ran into it almost. It said Jackson Shoe Repair. I don't know, something about it, it looks cool, so I wanted to show it. This little side door right here. This place looks pretty cool. It's a uh, Marksville Masonic Lodge, number 269, uh, 1901. The centennial anniversary, 1901 to 2001. Gorgeous building. It definitely looks 124 years old. I love that stuff, man. Love it. Always been fascinated in Masonic Lodges. Here's the front of the Masonic Lodge, 269. F and AM. Look at that front door. I'll tell you what, man, if I could get a house like this to live in and just restore it myself or have it restored before I move in, which would be even better. But uh, just to live in something like this would be amazing. Or just to own something like this and be able to go inside and have it and see it on a daily basis. So if you look at the street signs here downtown, guys, you can see the broken wheel. And it's actually, it's not like a blemish in the, the print. It's actually, you know, that's actually a picture of a broken wheel on the sign. So you got Mark Street and Washington Street. It's cool, huh? Nice little detail. So right next to the courthouse here, this is still the back of the courthouse and kind of walking back towards the courthouse. We see this nice building here has a plaque on it. So as soon as the cars pass, I'll go and see what this place used to be and what it serves as now, but I love that old red brick. There's something about the old red brick that just makes it look even older than a lot of buildings around it and, and all of the downtown cities we go to. 
So the Lewis P. Roy Senior Building is what this building is, circa 1900. So it is one of the older ones, I was right. Usually when you see these red brick buildings, like I said just now, when you see the older buildings like this, they're usually in that red or brick. It always seems to be the oldest buildings in that color. Victorian mercantile store built by Lewis P. Roy Senior, restored in 1984 and 85 by Attorney Tucker Melosa, more attorneys, and Rodney Rabelais, and certified public accountants Aloysia Ducote and Van P. Major. It's another attorney office. Lots of those around here, it seems. I love this look. That brickwork, attention to detail there. So here's just a broad view of some of the buildings on the left, on the, well, if you're facing the front of the courthouse, it's on your right, but if you're facing the back of the courthouse, it's on your left. But I don't see any plaques on any of these buildings, so I don't know what they were or used to be or anything. There's no signage or anything of what they used to be. You know, usually they would put the signs on the top, like on top of the windows, they'd usually have the names of the businesses up there. But it's still just absolutely beautiful restoration and keeping these buildings up. So I'm not gonna walk too far off path here, guys, because this whole area is full of buildings like this. So um, it'd be a long vlog if I went to each and every building, but I did see this old, what used to be obviously an old service station. I don't know what the business is now, but uh, man, they've done a good job of keeping that up. And I love these old service stations. I wouldn't be surprised if that was also built around the 20s, early, early 20th century. But good job, whoever keep, did it, you know, whoever's keeping that place up, they're doing a great job. Nothing like a good service station from back in those days. You can just picture the way it used to be. And right next to that service station, walking back kind of towards the courthouse, the reason I give you guys kind of coordinates to where I'm going is because some people have commented, you know, they see these videos and they're like, oh man, I can't wait to go and visit that town. So I try to help people out so they can watch my vlogs and kind of be oriented and you know, where I am and where to walk and which direction to walk in to get to some of these places if they are maybe limited in their, you know, mobility and stuff like that. So that's the reason I give quote unquote coordinates to where I'm walking and stuff. But some of these old buildings here, 19 Blanchard's, or 1935, Blanchard's 1935. And here's uh, JM Bar, Barham, Barham building, if I'm reading that right. Barham. Barham, in Barham, Barham. Office supply building, you could tell it says something back there behind that, behind that sign, it says FR something, but most of it's covered. I'd love to be able to see behind it, but we not get hit by a car here. Here's this beautiful corner building here. It's like a bank. Possibly has an ATM inside, so maybe it's a bank. And even if it's not a bank anymore, it looks like it used to be a bank. There's a plaque on it, so I'm gonna go look at it as soon as I can cross the street here. So the plaque on the bank says golden anniversary of the Union Bank, uh, September 3rd, 1960, which so uh, going off of the golden, uh, golden means 50, so that would indicate that it was built in 1910, which looks about right. Not a whole lot of detail on that plaque. It kind of was vague and had a lot of people's names on it, but not a whole lot of history of the bank on the plaque. But yeah, oh yeah, look at this. Look how cool that looks. That's definitely 1910 looking to me. Love it, love it, love it. That old iron rail right there. There's a couple buildings over here. I want to show you guys, and there's probably not too much left to show here downtown. There's, of course, there's a lot of stuff I could spend another hour and a half looking at in this immediate downtown area, but I don't like to make my vlogs that long, but try to keep the, the main points and the, the main things I want to show you guys. So let's go look at a couple more places and, uh, that are coming up here. Like I said, we've seen the Laborde name a couple times today so far. So it says Laborde Building 1926. Arts and Crafts, two-story brick building built by Dr. E. M. Laborde and Cliff E. Laborde for commercial use downstairs and dental and legal offices upstairs. 
Tidewater Marine Incorporated, founded here in 1956. Check out these doors. Don't really think those are original to the place, but they're actually really nice. Oh, check out this old stairway in here. Can't see what's up there though. And I love, if you see my other vlogs, you know I love these old uh, display windows in the front of buildings. There's such a glare here, I'm sorry. La Petite Affaire Cafe. So it's a cafe now. This looks like it was another service station. Check this out. It's like a nursery now. I always love, there's nothing, I think my favorite thing about, you know, downtown areas and just that time period, you know, mid century, mid 20th century, with the, is the old, what am I trying to say? Is the old service stations where you park and an attendant comes out and he washes your windows for you and he fills your tank up and he puts air in your tires and checks your oil. You know, you can get a Coke or something to drink. And uh, we we're joking just now and he's like, the guy comes back to your car and he's like, all right, that'll be 50 cents, sir. <laughs> Instead of these days where you get any one of those things done and it's 50 bucks. Well, the gas will be like 80 bucks, but you know what I mean? All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed Marksville, Louisiana. It's been a real treat for me, like I was saying a while ago, you know, with the courthouse and, and stumbling upon Mr. Riddle and getting that uh, cool information from him about Mr. Solomon and the history of the uh, 12 years of slave and all that. And uh, just walking around downtown. Although, like I said earlier, Marksville is not a big place. What you see is what you get. This is basically the downtown area of Marksville, the main street, and then the one or two streets around it with the buildings I showed you. That's pretty much all of it. The population of Marksville itself is only about 5,000 people. So it's not a very big place. Uh, there's a casino here uh, that you've seen in the other vlog. I'm actually about to go eat dinner there after this. Again, we, we, were, we went and ate there last time I was here, so uh, I wanted to go make a return visit and all that. So, but. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, beautiful place. I highly recommend you guys if you're in the area, you know, swerve off course a little bit and come see Marksville when you can, especially on the weekends and it's fairly quiet. There's plenty of parking and all that. But uh, with that, I'll go ahead and close this out. I love you all. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bells. If you want to donate to the channel, don't forget about my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash travel without a cause. And the most important part of the blog is the closing here when I say, don't forget to stay cool and stay tuned. But even more importantly, don't forget to stay tuned and stay cool. You guys have a good one and goodbye.